Today we're talking about Bon & Vive Spiked Seltzer Prickly Pear Edition and much more. Hey there, NJRoot22.com here with another booze chat vlog. And today we're talking about the Bon & Vive Spiked Seltzer Prickly Pear Edition. I mentioned this in a, a few videos ago, I don't know how many videos ago, but uh, that I was going to buy a six pack of this uh, Bon & Vive Spiked Seltzer. And I noticed when I looked at all the different flavors, each one had different varying amounts of carbs. I think anywhere from one gram of carbs all the way up to I think two or three on some of them, the various flavors for whatever reason. And I singled this one out and I had to have, have it special order at the liquor store because it was the lowest one I could find. there. I think there is one more that's uh, one gram of carbs. And our objective is, when we drink, to have the lowest amount of carbs. Uh, that's why I, I, I stopped drinking wine because of the sulfites and all the impurities. And so far, the, the two drinks that we are in, in, you know, enjoying these days are vodka uh, mixed with uh, unflavored, or, or I mean, unsweetened seltzer as well as these uh, spiked seltzers. And the, the current champ, again, is the uh, Smirnoff brand. Uh, we like that the best overall. It's, not, it's, it's grown on us even more in the last few months. Uh, it really does have the best taste. And right now I'm drinking the Bon & Vive. I don't even know if I'm saying it. Is it Bon & Viv? Is it Bone and I don't know. I have no idea what how, how to say it. Now, a little disclaimer here. I don't think a single person on planet Earth drinks these seltzers the way I do. I water them down. They're already a pretty low alcohol drink compared to a glass of wine, which is usually, you know, 13, 14, 15% alcohol. Seltzers and most beer are in the four to five to six percent range. So you're already having a watered down drink comparing it to like a mixed drink like vodka, tonic or whatever. So I am a little bit different. I water mine down in a, in a quart glass here with ice that melts over, over, over the course of the drink. So instead of getting four and a half percent alcohol, which these are, I'm starting off at two and a quarter and the alcohol percentage goes down as I, as I uh, consume the drink. It'll go from two and a quarter and as the ice melts, it'll 2%, 1.75. By the end, the last few sips are under 2% alcohol. I drink that way for many reasons because A, number one reason, I like to consume fluids. I, drink, I consume a lot of fluid every day. Quarts of coffee, quarts of tea, quarts of water, and quarts of booze, uh, watered down booze. I just like consuming fluids. Um, not everybody is as hydrated as I am. Uh, I just, I enjoy it. I guess that's what's kept me alive for so long. I guess all the toxins have plenty of uh, of uh, freeway uh, speed to get out of my body. Um, either that or I'm destroying my organs in some other way. But either way, I'm going way off base here. I want to review this seltzer to see how it compared with the, the standard. The, the Smirnoff is the standard. I'm freezing here, I don't know why. It's like spring, it's gonna be 70 degrees uh, this week and, and I'm wearing a down jacket. And I'm, I'm like chilled to the bone. This happens to me sometimes because you I guess when you lose body fat, you just uh, it takes time to adjust to your new uh, new uh, insulation. But the prickly pear, I didn't like the other Bon and Vive. I think there was one flavor in the. You have to check the video out in my uh, channel. Uh, there was one flavor that I really liked a lot. One flavor that I really despise, and a couple other flavors that were uh, eh, mediocre. And this one, I, I don't think it falls into the, I like it a lot, I like it a lot um, category. Again, because I mix it with some other kind of flavored seltzer. Today it's orange, sometimes it's black cherry. So my, my drinks are like Frankenstein of, of seltzers. Uh, I wish they actually would make a unflavored spiked seltzer like a plain one, because I, I add my own flavors anyway, lemon juice and ginger. 
It's delicious. I can't, I don't want it to drink it any other way. I drink this plain and something tastes, tastes weird to me. I mean, I liked it, it's okay, but uh, there's one thing I wanted to talk about here. It's the, the type of alcohol. Let me read the ingredients to you. It's purified water. Cold fermented corn sugar. Now that bugs me because A, I don't like sugar. B, I'm not a big fan of corn, the whole corn industry. I, it doesn't say non-GMO on, so it's probably like some sort of nefarious corn. And that, I'll probably never buy this again. The only time I'll ever buy it is if the liquor store is closing in five minutes and I want a seltzer and they don't have Smirnoff. That's the only time I'm going to buy this again. But they say here it's gluten free, natural flavors. That that's that's such a scam. Natural flavors. Like no one questions that anymore. I don't think it's even illegal for them to say natural flavors. It doesn't say 100%. I I don't know. I could go on and on. Natural flavors. One thing could be natural. Like one percent of it could be natural, and that wouldn't be illegal to say on the can. No sugar added, and it's just right. Four percent. Four point five percent alcohol. Also has natural prickly pear strawberry flavor. What does that mean? I don't know. And then it has sodium citrate, which I believe is the uh, tartness, and then malted rice. So this to me, even though it's one gram of carbs, it has a lot of uh, ingredients on here that are carb based. I, I, I honestly, to be, I don't know what malted rice is. And, and is that what gives it, why do they put it in? For what reason? I don't know. And looking at the uh, Smirnoff can, it doesn't really tell you the ingredients. It doesn't tell you the ingredients on the box either. I guess you have to go to their website or look up their legal file somewhere to get the exact ingredients. But I've had tremendous success with the Smirnoff brand. So I, I can vouch for, I guess now, today, until I find out something later on when it's too late. But yeah, that one gram for, the, for both these. So I'm, I'm a little bit uh, concerned uh, in terms of, like this one lists sodium at 25 uh, milligrams per can and the Smirnoff does not mention sodium at all. So I, I really don't know. They're both grain based. Uh, the Smirnoff says, uh, I removed gluten from grains containing gluten, da da da, crafted be I Like I said, I'm only gonna buy this when, if I, it's five minutes before closing time and I want my seltzer. Luckily for me, you plan ahead. You always have, you know, two or three days or so, a week, a week of uh, supply on hand. I'll never go below a week. It's like uh, my my dad always said, when uh, treat your car like when it, at, at a quarter tank or higher, like half a tank, even better. When you're at ha a quarter tank, treat that as empty. Like rush to the gas station, never go below a quarter. So I, I always try to have a good supply of either you know have a bottle of vodka on hand, a decent uh, two or three days worth of seltzer and uh, spiked seltzer, and lots of. Uh, non-alcoholic seltzer. So I, I can't really say anything awesome about this. Uh, I can't remember what how I felt the next day um, with these, but I just don't like even seeing the word corn anymore. So I, who knows? Maybe, uh, I mean, a lot of, some vodkas are made from corn, potatoes, and, and eh, you can go on and on and on and on and on and on and about it. And then I probably lost all my readers. No one, no one's, uh, listening to what I have to say here. So I'm just saying it to myself. Um, I rambled and that's it. Uh, nothing to write home about. Have a nice week ahead or behind and ahead.